Hi everyone, this is Sayis Mike speaking and welcome to my mobile repairing video. So this video will be a, a complete mobile repairing course. When I say a complete mobile repairing course, I don't mean I, I will teach you everything. I'm going to teach you one thing in this video and make a series of videos teaching you other things you understand. So if you are new to my channel, subscribe and like the video because this video will be long and we will go deep into how to troubleshoot how shorting and how to troubleshoot full shorting. In this video, I will show you all the steps in troubleshooting and the easiest way that I use I myself use to easily identify if a mobile phone has a full shorting or a half shorting if you are watching this on TikTok make sure that you follow me so looking at this screen here I'm going to zoom in explain everything to you so that you will understand how you can actually do the troubleshooting this is how I used to make my videos and I've noticed that a lot of you guys miss this type of videos I've made a lot of practical videos so you can also check that as well but for now I want us to stick this way because a lot of people learn everything using this way so looking at this screen here you can see that we have a mobile PCB right so I'm going to zoom into the mobile PCB then we are going to start I will show you how you can troubleshoot shorting in a mobile PCB step by step so what we have here we have a Samsung A50 PCB and these Samsung PCBs are the ones that I prefer using when I'm teaching because if you learn the Samsung PCB you'll be able to repair any type of Android phone you understand okay so if you receive a mobile phone that is not powering on let's say you receive this particular mobile phone that is not powering on as you can see I have every tools here I have my DC power supply to connect to it but I'm not just going to teach you how you can use your DC power supply to detect because I know that like 80% uh, of mobile phone technicians do not have a DC power supply I'm serious about that okay so if you don't have a DC power supply or if you have a DC power supply how do you go on to troubleshoot and know the fault like I said we are talking about how shorting and full shorting how can you find half shorting and full shorting in a mobile PCB? If I receive this mobile phone right now that the mobile phone is not powering on, the first thing that I'm going to check in a mobile phone, you check the battery. Check the battery voltage. You can see the standard voltage should be between the 3.7 volt. 3.6 can be okay, but anything less than 3.5, you will need to boost up the battery to see if the battery is okay or not so that's just the first thing right so that's the basic thing that every technician should be able to check first when troubleshooting a dead mobile phone okay so if you troubleshoot that dead mobile phone so if you activate the battery then the phone still doesn't switch on which shows that you have to go deep into the pcb right what next do you have to check first you need your multimeter to check you understand so what is it that you need your multimeter to check I want you to understand this in a mobile PCB let me zoom in this a little bit in every single mobile PCB we have what we call the battery connector and the battery connector is what we call the primary line of that mobile PCB which is popularly known as the VBAT line so the VBAT line is the battery connector the VBAT is the voltage directly from the battery and when you connect the battery here you will get the VBAT voltage which is the primary voltage that the phone needs to be able to power up keep that in mind before we get into what you actually need to do second you have the VPH line which is the secondary and the main power supply of the mobile PCB I'm going to show you where this VPH line is in the mobile PCB so the vph line is always in the charging circuit of the mobile pcb because the charging ic is the main component that converts the primary line to the secondary line it converts the v v bar voltage to the vph voltage so this charging ic converts that v bar voltage to the vph voltage through the most tube so you need to keep that in mind 
Okay, so why am I talking about the VBAD and the VPH? These are the, the most common sections and lines in a mobile PCB that you can get a shot and easily to take that shot, then solve the shot to be able to fix the phone. You understand? So how can you find a shot in the VPH line and in the VBAD line? First, you need to understand something. A shot in the VBAD line you can be able to easily identify it using your multimeter from the battery connector. Keep in mind, I said a shot in the VBAD line, you can easily detect that shot using your, your multimeter or your DC power supply through the VBAD line. That is because, let me use my multimeter to show you an example. That is because you can see we have our multimeter right here. If I receive this phone and I'm going in to check the battery connector to see if I will get a shot, all I have to do, I set my multimeter to the continuity test mode. And once I set it, I use my probes. I use my probes. And if I put, put them together, you will hear a beep, right? So all I have to do, I perform what, what I call a pole testing. The red probe should go to the ground as you can see the ground is clear in the mobile pcb so this is the gnd which is the ground you can see this is the pin and this, uh, this is the ground you can connect it anywhere here so the red probe will go to the ground and then the black probe i use it to check the positive is easily the positive you can see it from the tracks in which maybe you will talk about this in a different lessons how you can uh, find this track but i think every technician should be able to know this but if you don't know you have nothing to worry about so if i test this this way you understand if i test perform this cold testing this way and there is a shot in the mobile pcb in the vbat line like i said you will see the reading on your multimeter you will see that the reading is completely zero and you will hear a beep you understand again if i perform this testing and there is a shot in the primary which is the vbat line you are going to get a, a beep in your multimeter even if you do a reverse testing with your black probe to the ground and the red probe to the positive you will still still get a beep so that beeps in the VBAD line, in the battery connector, shows that there is a shot in the VBAD line. And how can you find a shot in the VBAD line? You need to know that there are few components and ICs in the mobile PCB that uses a VBAD line, depending on the mobile PCB. But first, I want you to understand that when you get this type of reading, it means that the components that can easily be causing the fault are from the the are from the battery connector and the charging circuit. Not in all cases, because in some phones, uh, components like uh, the backlight IC, the RF amplifier IC, they also use a direct VBAT voltage. But if they use a VPH voltage, that means that you cannot check the VBAT shot in that section. Because if it's a VPH voltage, if it's a VPH short, you won't be able to get that VPH short in your VBAT line completely shortened. Except you use your multimeter or except you open the mobile PCB and access the charging IC, then test around the charging IC to see if you are going to get a short in the VPH line okay so i'm talking about the vpa shot and i think that you are not understanding something but i'm going to explain okay so if you receive this phone i've talked about full shorting i know that you might not understand everything in this video but yeah like i said we'll keep on going going slowly even though i'm not going to cover up everything yeah to be truthful because I have my courses, I uh, those who uh, are buying the courses are learning every single thing. And I know that there are people out here who, who cannot afford the courses. So I'm trying to, for them to also benefit from the knowledge that I have. I learn, I teach, and that's how it is, you understand. So if you are watching this video and you want complete mobile repairing courses with everything being detailed, well then you can get my courses from the link in my bio if in case you are watching this on tiktok or from the link in the video description so you can get my courses right now with the discount yeah 
okay so let's go back to the video we were talking about the the vpa short right so if this mobile pcb has a vpa short your multimeter won't be able to detect that vpa short here because the vpa doesn't use the same line it's not the same line as the vbat voltage you understand the vph line is different from the vbat so if the vph line is shorting you won't be able to detect your multimeter won't be able to beep or even give a low reading in the VBAT line. So the only time that you can be able to identify the, the, the VPA short in the VBAT line is when you use the DC power supply. If you connect the DC power supply to the battery connector and there is a short in the VPA line, you will see you will see that there is a 20 or 40. You will see that there is a current consumption between 15 and 100 milliampere in a DC power supply you understand so it depends on the circuit and how every component act when it comes to regulating current passing through when you connect your DC power supply you understand so because there is a short in the VPH line the DC power supply will be able to detect that short so what if you don't have a DC power supply remember in the beginning of the video I said if you have a DC power supply you are good if you don't have you are still good right so if you don't have a DC power supply how can you be able to identify the short in the VPH line if you are not able to identify it in the battery connector I will show you so what you need to do you need to be able to identify the type of PCB that you are working on because not every single mobile phone has a, a, a VPH line most phones do have a vph line but you see phones like uh, these small chinese company phones like itel and those small phones they don't have a vph line because they don't have a big charging ic in the mobile pc most of the charging connection most of the charging circuit is integrated with the power manager ic but if you see any android phone with a big charging ic that android phone has a vph coming out from the charging ic so how can you identify this you need to identify the the type of pcb that you are working on and you need to identify the charging circuit on that mobile pcb keep that in mind so once you identify the charging circuit on that mobile pcb which is the charging ic you have to go to the circuit as you can see here we have our charging ic here so in the charging IC circuit, there is always an inductor, which is the VPH inductor. That's the first component that receives the VPH. That's the first component that receives the VPH voltage. You need to keep that in mind. So when there is a short in the VPH line, you will get the short from here. It doesn't matter if the short is from the network section the network section the, the input line that receives the vph and power of the network section it doesn't matter if it's from the backlight section from the vph line that powers up the backlight section you are going to get that shot here using your multimeter so if there is a shot in the vph line you will see that this inductor is beeping in both sides you will see that this diode is beeping in both sides so how can you then troubleshoot from here how can you then know the exact component that is shorting? I have a lot of videos, practical videos about that. How you can inject voltage in a mobile PCB. And yeah, that's it. So I think now you know how to find this. You know how you can identify the VPH and the VBAT short. And if there is a short, let me just make it clear so that maybe you can find the videos that I'm talking about later. Meanwhile, having an idea on how you can yeah inject voltage to find a short in the vph line it's quite simple you see a short in the vph line right all you have to do inject 3.5 volt is the vph line which means that yeah 3.5 volt is a safe voltage even 4 volt is still a safe voltage in this section some people might disagree but that's okay i've been doing it everything working good you put yeah yeah inject your voltage here yeah? you can solder a cable or just use your more your, your meta probes by using connecting your dc power supply right then inject a 3.5 volt and a 5 amp voltage here so when you inject inject it 
you will normally see that there is a high current consumption in um, in your DC power supply depending on how the short is. If it's a short that is shorting with zero ohm reading, you will see a high. But if the, the short is not a zero ohm short, then you will see that the reading is not going to be that high. But still, you are going to get the component heating up in a mobile PCB. And again, because the component is heating up doesn't mean that ic is bad especially when you test inject the voltage and you see that maybe the 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 power manager ic is heating up the cpu is heating up the charging ic is heating up when you see that you still have to go on check check the other sections to see if there is a capacitor anywhere causing a shot that is causing different ic's to heat up or how so i believe that you have learned a lot from this video I believe that you have learned a lot again i'm going to upload more subscribe follow me then get my courses if you want to learn everything learn micro soldering how to troubleshoot everything step by step so thank you and see you soon